Good morning, everyone. I'm Hugo Pfister. I'm currently a postdoc at the Dark Institute in Copenhagen in Denmark and at the University of Hong Kong in Hong Kong in China. Today, I'm going to discuss the recent work that I've been doing on growing black holes uh, with stars. So why uh, are we interested in growing black holes with stars? So if you think of uh, the classic limit uh, of uh, accretion when you when you want to grow black holes, you have a black hole surrounded by cold gas, and gas is falling through gravity onto the black hole, and then uh, mass is converted into energy, and this pushes the gas away, uh, which tends to uh, create a limit, which we call the Eddington limit. But if you think on the exact same cartoon, but in addition to gas, you put stars, then gas and stars are still falling onto the black holes, but because stars form a collision, a collision less fluid, they, are, they do not suffer from uh, pressure, and so maybe they could fall onto the black hole uh, at a very high rate. The interesting thing is that if you look in the center of galaxies, here is an image from observation where you zoom on a closed galaxy, you see that in the center of the galaxy there is a huge, a very overdense region, which we call the nuclear star cluster, and several models, such as uh, the, the, this plot from uh, my recent paper, shows that uh, you have an overdensity of orders of magnitude in the center of galaxies. So maybe, uh, due to stars, we could grow black hole at a higher rate. The interesting thing when you throw a star onto a black hole is that due to the tidal effect from uh, the black hole onto the star, uh, the star is disrupted. So these arrows, they represent the force created by the black hole onto the star. And this will tend to disrupt the star, as you can see in this uh, simulation from David Liptai. And uh, when the star is disrupted, it will result in an accretion disk, which will be very luminous and we can observe to very high redshift. So we can, from observation, observe these tidal distribution events. And uh, these tidal distribution events, or TDs for later, are a direct probe uh, of the rate at which stars fall onto black holes. So we have observed about a dozen of events uh, today. I'm showing here uh, an observational uh, paper where you see on the y-axis the volumetric rate of uh, TDs as a function of the galaxy mass. The four squares indicate data, and uh, the gray dashed line indicates the galaxy mass function uh, multiplied by 10 to the minus 4. So this is assuming that there is one event, one TD every 10 to the 10,000 years in every galaxy. And you see that in the low mass end, uh, the model represents well uh, the data. So uh, we can safely assume that there is about one event every 10,000 years, regardless of the mass of the galaxy. And if you assume that one event uh, corresponds to one solar mass which is accreted, then uh, you find that uh, this rate is larger than the Eddington ratio for light black holes. So maybe uh, accretion from stars is important in the dwarf regime. There is a lot of uh, drawback in this uh, study. What is the total contribution of the black hole growth? What if feedback is added? Um, what if uh, black holes are not in the center of galaxy, but they are wandering in the galaxy? And if you want to address this question, then you have to move to cosmological simulation. So I'm showing here a state-of-the-art cosmological simulation where you are looking at a stellar projection. So it's a galaxy which is building up its material, and the red dots are different black holes. And in this simulation, we have a new subgrid model that I developed to take into account tidal distribution event. And you see that some black holes are surrounded by a yellow circle, and it means that the tidal distribution event is, lar is larger than 10 to the minus 5 events uh, per year. So you see that in the end, you have a lot of black holes, uh, some of which are, uh, have a high TD rate. So if we look at uh, the mass, so the orange line is the mass of the galaxy as a function of time. The green line is the mass of the black hole as a function of time. And the blue and the black line indicate the mass of, that the black hole has the accreted of gas in blue and stars in um, black. So you see that you have accreted about 10 to the four solar masses in one giga year, which is about 10 to the minus five giga uh, even per year. So this is uh, consistent with observations, even if this is uh, redshift six. And you see that uh, when the black hole is massive, uh, the entities are completely irrelevant to grow black holes. But in the early uh, regime, maybe entities are important. Here I'm showing uh, the mass of stars, uh, accreted mass of stars divided by the total uh, accreted mass. So this is the, the fraction of mass which is accreted through stars. And you see that in the early phase, it can be uh, very high, more than 10% during the first 300 million years. 
So as they are Christian, contribute to uh, more than 10% during the first 300 million years. I leave you here with my conclusion. So TDs uh, are possibly an observational consequence of stellar accretion, and maybe they can sustain a superadenton accretion. I developed a model to take into account TDs in this cosmetic assimilation. This TD rate can be as large as 10 to the minus 5 events per year, and uh, TDs can be important in the early growth of black holes. Thank you for your attention.